Hi and welcome to today's video. This is going to be my first update for the Pan of Green Gables project pan. So as you might guess from the name, it's an Anne of Green Gables inspired project created by Anna from My Makeup Insanity and it's a fantastic ladies collab. So there's lots of people doing the project and it's lots of fun. It's just six months long and we've got some lovely prompts obviously inspired by the book series and the characters and some of the uh, features and things from Anne's imagination. So really cute, really nice idea and I've had fun with this so far. I don't have huge progress on anything yet but wanted to give you a little update. I think this project may be started on the 13th and the finale date is the 9th of the month. Um, so I am going to try to do my updates on the 9th because I'm actually going to be updating the Hellmouth Project Pan, welcome to the Hellmouth Project Pan, the Buffy and the Vampire Slayer inspired project on the 13th. So I wanted to uh, separate those out and do um, two separate videos on separate days. So. I am gonna get straight into my updates. The first prompt is hair as red as carrots, obviously Anne's hair color. And for this, it's any red product or product in red packaging. I could have picked a red lipstick and I do love those, but I'm not sure if I'm really in panning a red lipstick space. We're still, I'm still wearing my, my mask a lot. So I picked the Misha BB cream because it comes in red packaging. I have the shade 13 and I'll just do a swatch here. You can see it's very light. I'm actually not wearing it today because I my makeup's a bit old. I've refreshed it a little but it's from um like 5 a.m this morning and it is now like eight half eight and eight thirty at night. So I, it didn't occur to me to put this on this morning, but it should have. So that's what it looks like. As you can see, I've still got a huge amount left. I have actually been using the mini a little bit. Two, so I have the two of them. I'm probably going to travel with the mini next month um, and the use the big or, bigger one at home. I really love this. I don't think there'll be any problem with me finishing this within the six months of the project. It's really nice. It's just like really natural kind of finish. Um, obviously I have oily skin, so this kind of less, not matte finish, not remotely matte finish, um, wouldn't necessarily be 100% for me all the time, but I find it wears away very naturally and it's such a good shade match for me. So that that's a huge deal um, and I really enjoy it and no harm that it has some SPF in it which I work shifts so sometimes I'm kind of going to work and the sun is nearly going down like especially in the winter and um, so it's kind of nice to on those days where I'm just really not going to interact with the sun much to have a base product with a little bit of sunblock if I don't need full proper intense sunblock. The second prompt is Lake of Shining Waters, which is the name Anne gives to the lake that I can't remember the real name of. It might be like such and such pond or something really boring. So I have the Catrice, oh, that's a lot more than glow, more than glow highlighter in O2O Supreme Rose Beam. So my aim here is to wear away the imprint. You can see in kind of the center of this flower the center flower, I feel like it's kind of beginning. So there were like indents at the edge of the petals in the center that have kind of flattened a bit. So it is beginning. Obviously the imprint is so beautiful that, I, oh God, my nails look terrible. Anyway, <laughs> I will paint them soon to get me one more use in another project before I update that. But um, I'm pretty happy with this. You know, I obviously, it's very cool toned. So I don't wear this every day. Like today's uh, look is a bit more warm toned. So I wouldn't wear it today. Look at that, such shine. Hence why it fits this prompt. I'm going to sleep. <laughs> Excuse me. 
the worst, the worst during COVID, the worst to sneeze in the office in front of people, the worst. So the third prompt is broken slate when Anne hits Gilbert over the head. Any broken prod product, so I have this and you see the mirror is cracked, uh, so I keep the cover on it and three of the shades broke en route to me. So my aim is to hit pan in any one shade. I obviously have not done that yet and I'm nowhere close. I'm not sure even really which shade I'm aiming for yet. So I've kind of been going with a lot of these kind of warmer looks. I love kind of these three together is really nice but the pinks and purples are lovely too. So I haven't really decided which shade I'm going to aim for pan with there but I'm enjoying it and um, the Vizier formula is just so easy and nice. It's pigmented, it blends well, and there just is nowhere near as much fallout as like any other formula I ever use. So I really like that. And I re I'm really lazy. I'm just like big fluffy brush all over the place, lazy. So, and with shimmers too. So it tends to kind of explode all over my cheeks. Afterwards, I'm with Viseart, it's just so much less than other shades, other shadows. So I really appreciate that. The fourth prompt is Gilbert Blythe, and it's anything that starts with a G. So <laughs> I picked the NYX Glitter Glue, and my aim with this is to use it 20 times, and basically to get to know how to use it. And I've used it three times. I... I wouldn't say I'm like super confident in how to use it now, but I feel like I know the basics of how to use this product now. So I'm really happy about that and I'm excited to try some of my more special shades um, and seeing, you know, do they stand out more? Um, does it help to bring out the shift, help, help to bring out the shine in some of the, you know, standout shades I've got in my eyeshadow collection? So I'm excited to play with that. The real thing is like, do I have the time that particular day to, you know, really go for it? That's the real question. And then do I remember? <laughs> and I have kind of like begun putting the shimmer on one eye and then I'm like, oh, I kind of, I thought maybe I'd use the glitter glue with this look. It's a bit late now and then just done it um, without. So that has been an issue. I do, I do keep it right beside me in the same drawer as my other eye primers. So... Um, it is in my face. I just, I'm not used to using it. So uh, hopefully as I keep racking up the uses in the next few months, I will get used to using it. So that is going well and liking it so far. The next prompt is puffed sleeves. So anything bulky. And I chose the Maybelline Curl Bounce Mascara. So I'm not actually wearing this today. Again, because I put my makeup on at 5am and wasn't really thinking about this video at the time. So you can see the nice curvy wand there. I like it and I have looked in the mirror after I've used this like just throughout the day and thought oh my my eyelashes look a bit longer, they're a bit more separated and there is a bit more of a curl than usual there and liked that obviously. But I have also had quite a bit of transfer. Now I have extremely oily skin, so I don't really blame any product for not withstanding what I'm putting it through, but it has been frustrating. So I often will only do mascara on my top lashes anyway, and I kind of feel that's the way to go with this one for me, unfortunately. So personally, once I use this up, I would not expect to be buying it again, but I'm enjoying it. Um, and the bulky packaging actually is funny because so it's like this very odd shape. The light I'm using my like daylight lamp thing and it's not the best. Um, the shape is this like curved, but then also there are two flat edges. So here and here. So actually you can put it flat on a table. Actually, I need something perfectly flat to demonstrate this. Here's a face palette. You can put it flat on a table like that and it doesn't roll. And I love when things cannot roll away. I really like that. So, like this. However, with your average mascara, 
it doesn't roll because instead of putting it like this, you put it like this and you can't do that with this one because it is curved at the ends. However, as I just demonstrated, it's easier to knock them over when their center of gravity is higher, when they're this way. Way too much detail. It really frustrates me if I'm, you know, busy doing things. I'm like, oh, I'll use this brush instead. I'll use that thing instead. Oh. And then I knock something off the table and I have to pick it up off the ground. Particularly something black or dark brown that's going to make a mark and get dust stuck to it. And ugh, I hate that. So I really appreciate that this won't roll. It's good stuff. Way too much detail. Also, big fan of a Bedellium Tools, uh, are they called triangle? Golden triangle brush. Because they also don't roll. They have flat edges. Amazing. So, bizarre detailed uh, point on the packaging. And I closed my notebook to get that face palette. So, the next um, prompt is Green Gables. And this, this is kind of my only exciting, exciting-ish visual progress is, do I have anything gross in it? Of course I do, because it is a soft cream in a pot. Soft cream in pots, why? Could soft creams please be in little squeezy tubes? Even though the packaging on this is gorgeous. So, this is the Becca Under Eye Primer. Love it. Such a nice feeling. You can see there we've got some big old pan going on. I already had pan when I put this into the project. I'll probably stick up a picture of what this looked like. Um, I think maybe before the project when I first got it or, you know, um, when I first started using it regularly. And now we've got a big amount of pan here. So this is sad because I really like this. However... Essence have like an under eye cooling stick that is this color. So I'm hoping it's like trying to do this same thing and um, just like feel really nice and be a bit hydrating under your eyes uh, to prepare that area for makeup. So I am going to try that out and not follow my instinct, which is to protect this and hoard it forever because I can't use this in five years. It will be disgusting and expired and have even more dust caught in it. I need to use it up now. So look at look at that holographic packaging. So pretty. So I'm going to continue using it even though I love it so much and I'll be sad when it's gone and celebrate with you instead of being sad. Um, it's not impossible that this could be gone, you know, halfway through the project because, you know, we're getting through it. We're getting through it. So that's my only exciting update. Spoiler alert for the next two. So, primarily because you can't really see visible progress on the next two type of products. So, the seventh prompt is Matthew Cuth Cuthbert. So, something sweet, because Matthew is very sweet. So, I picked the Maybelline Lifter Gloss in 007 Amber. I'm trying to get you, show you the word lifter. It's not really working. So, this is what I'm wearing today. The formula of these, so nice. That stickiness, it's a bit gross. And sometimes I put it on and I'm like, ooh, I need to take a bit off there. It's gone outside the lines, but look at that pigmentation. This is what I want. I don't want lip glosses that have almost no color to them because my color, my color, my lips aren't pigmented enough for my liking. So I love this delicious vanilla y like super chemically vanilla smell and scent or scent, smell and scent are the same thing <laughs> smell and taste um and I like it yeah actually yeah this is definitely very much sticking to the sides because there's some clear use on this okay you can see a tiny bit of windowing there oh you could yeah you can see it there we go. There's a tiny bit of windowing. So the reason for that is I generally take this out with me. I have it in work. I have it around the place. And despite the fact that I'm wearing masks a lot, if I'm sitting at my desk or if I'm somewhere, I will put something on while I'm not wearing my mask. 
and this continues to feel nice like after the color and stuff wears away this feels nice and this doesn't you know it's not a lip balm but if you're if my lips were getting chapped and I'm stuck and I didn't have a lip balm with me I would put this on bar over putting nothing on which with many glosses I wouldn't do that because they they would just further dry out my lips that's not the case with this so that's why I'm getting through this and I'm enjoying it so my aim with this was to like use half of it but I was kind of hoping it would sink that does not appear to be happening like the fact that that windowing is just here and not at the top not that I always store it like this but that makes me think actually I'm never going to be able to do that let me show you inside can you you can't really see but there is you know oh you can see a little bit this is gross <laughs> There isn't an enormous amount in there. And I know Mandy Leah and other people have complained about the quantity you get in this enormous, this could have gone for bulky packaging too. Ridiculously large thing. It's only 5.4 mils. So, or what's it? Um, 0 0.18 fluid ounces, whatever that is. Well, it's 5.4 mils. Um, so, oh, there's another window. Oh my God. Okay, flying through this much quicker than I thought I would. That's awesome. But also, why are they giving us such a big thing for a small amount of lip gloss? A little frustrating. So, long rant over. This one will be shorter. <laughs> the eighth prompt is Marilla Cuthbert. So, uh, Matthew's sister and a bit less obviously sweet. She's still very sweet. So, it's something soft in hard packaging. So, like Marilla's personality and for that I chose the Elf Webra. Mine is in neutral brown. Sorry I don't have my glasses on and that's very small obviously. Again this is gross. Why am I swatching things that look gross and showing you things that look gross? But anyway there is the colour. So I think it works quite well for me because it's like more of a cool toned brown which is great and it has like the little fibres in it, focus on the thing, focus on the thing, not really working. Anyway, see that it looks a bit hairy and gross. Um, I So that's all I have in my brows today. Let me show you my big forehead and my brows. Um, and it's generally all I'm putting in my brows because I just don't have time. I, I don't have the time. Um, I'm not good at doing my brows. Just a little something extra over the almost no brow hairs that I have um, to help me out and it's great. So the reason I put this in the project over and above my million other cream or soft products in hard packaging is because it expires quickly, only three months. So according to ALF, this is expired now. I'm going to keep using it. It's, it's going well for me. I think probably if it starts clumping or flaking off, maybe that'll be my sign that I just can't use it anymore. Um, but I don't think we're in that territory yet. So I'm enjoying it and I love the convenience of a brow gel like that. That's just quick and easy to use. And I know it's funny, YouTubers generally say, you know, they love when there's a small wand on a brow gel like that. And um, Robert Welsh says he hates that because <laughs> he, has, he has lovely big eyebrows. Uh, I have such small eyebrows, like that wand is too big for me often. Like I can't do like the ends precisely with that at all. So uh, it's just funny. We're all so different. But um, I'm really enjoying that product. And I'm enjoying all of these products, actually. That's, I, I feel very happy, you know, this no question of hate panning here. Obviously with these kinds of prompts, you're very free and you can add your own spin to the interpretation. So that's very enjoyable with a project like this. So I'm excited to see other people's updates for the Pan of Green Gables project. And I hope all of your project pan goals are within your reach and you're having fun with your projects. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you hopefully tomorrow, for my Partners in Cream update. Bye!